It's the summer of 2018. The clock has just struck midnight. We have all of our gear, weapons, and are ready to pull this thing off. As I slam my fifth Coca-Cola that night, we get in the cart and head for the bank. On the drive there, we start to shoot the shit about other games coming out, such as Red Dead Redemption 2 that comes out a few months at that time. The conversation ended up going towards this one game called GTA San Andreas. Now look, I had no idea what this game was. Was it a sequel to GTA 5? A spin-off? To be honest, like I had no idea. So I asked, like, what's GTA San Andreas? All three looked at me with disappointment. There was a strange moment of silence, and the next thing I know, I'm thrown out into the freeway and its sandy shores. I get myself cleaned up with sand marks all over my body, and I look up on my phone what GTA San Andreas actually is. Shit, here we go again. From that moment on, my life had completely changed. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, 20 years later. Wow, man, like what an incredible lifetime this game has had. To this day, it's still popular than ever. I would even go as far to say that it's even as popular as Grand Theft Auto V. This game has truly stood the test of time. As the skit in the beginning indicates, I never really grew up with San Andreas. In fact, I didn't play it until 2021 when the remasters came out. But we all know how that ended up. But I had a unique journey playing the older GTA games, especially this one. But before we dive deep into the story, the game, and the overall journey of this game that defined Rockstar Games, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Nick and I make videos about GTA, Red Dead Redemption 2, and other Rockstar games. So if that interests you, make sure to hit that subscribe button and see more videos like this. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm glad to see you again. Now, to be honest, this video was originally going to be a complete retrospective of the GTA San Andreas story, similar to how I did my GTA 5 10 years later video last year. But the amount of story that this game has, the characters, and everything, it would have been a long ass video, probably over two to three hours. Plus, I feel like everyone else has just done better like videos and breakdowns of San Andreas. Also, I don't really remember the game that much. It's not like GTA 5 where I know the game like the back of my hand. Like I said before, I never grew up with this game. So I would have felt like a phony, like, you know, talking with the story super in depth because genuinely I just don't know much about it and I don't remember too much about it. Like, you know, I know there's people out there who are more capable of telling the story way better, like the professional. Across all the Rockstar games, there seems to be one recurring theme that I see with all of them. They all have banger stories and they are one of the reasons why I became a filmmaker. It's because I fell in love with not just the GTA 5 stories, but all their stories amongst all of their games. And GTA San Andreas is no different. This game probably has one of my favorite storylines in any Rockstar games. The game starts with CJ, returning home in Los Santos, coming back after his mother passed away. He left his friends and family behind to start a new life in Liberty City, Grand Theft Auto's version of New York. He comes back five years later and is quickly thrown back into his old routine, corrupt cops, gang warfare, and family issues. As a story itself, it truly nails the beginning in both the storytelling aspect and the game itself. GTA San Andreas' story is massive, taking place over multiple years and having a lot of different characters. But when we first enter the game, it doesn't feel overwhelming at all. We slowly get introduced to CJ, the story about his mom, and the Grove Street family's gang shit. The game knows that we are just entering the story for the first time and we have basically no idea what's going on. And this is very different if you compare it to GTA 5 story or Red Dead Redemption 2 story, for example. Those games just kind of throw you into the story and world. And it's really up to you. You have to pay attention of what's going on within the characters. Those games just kind of throw you into the mix and you have to figure it out yourself. But GTA San Andreas, the game is pretty long of it itself, so it has plenty of time to tell a story. It's not rushing to give you all this information. It's slowly like revealing everything as the player is playing it for the first time. And it doesn't overwhelm you when you first start out the game. One thing I really like is certain areas are locked until you progress through the story. Like when we first start in Los Santos and we spend some time there, we spend a good chunk like observing each different area of the map as a story and game naturally evolve, like going to Mount Chiliad and like the city up there, San Fierro and Las Venturas. And speaking about the locations, I just love how this game not has one, not two, but three major cities in the game. Low key kind of a flex against the other Grand Theft Auto games. Hell, we might not even have three major cities in Grand Theft Auto 6. So this is a huge accomplishment for this game. <laughs> but even though the map obviously isn't that big, it just feels like it is because there is just so much stuff to do. There's missions, there's shops, casinos, strip clubs, sports, properties, 
fucking awesome planes to fly, even jetpacks, gang wars, and just so much other stuff to do. Not to mention the extreme character customization that you can do with haircuts, outfits, tattoos, and my favorite, the gym. It's kind of funny because I was really into the gym last year in real life, and I just, I think this game kind of inspired me to go to the gym in the first place. It's such a disgrace that this feature isn't in any of the other games. You can literally become the next Mike Tyson in this game, or if you just have fast food and don't work out at all in the game, you can become the next EDP. But I don't know why they got rid of restaurants in GTA 5. Like it was just a simple yet underrated feature that made the game more immersive. But I'm glad they brought it back in Red Dead Redemption 2 where you have to eat to survive at some points. And that's the whole thing of the game. It was immersive, especially for a game that is now 20 years old and it still holds up as immersive as Red Dead Redemption 2. That is saying a lot. But as much as I wanna say that this game is awesome and perfect, in reality, it's just not. It's really not. And that's completely fine. Not every game is perfect or has to be. With GTA San Andreas, there's a lot that's good with it, which I really love, and there's a lot of it that's bad. But me speaking as a 20 year old with a career, I'm filmmaking, posting on YouTube every week. I don't really have much time for video games ever. Nowadays, I just maybe play a few times a year. As crazy as that sounds, like I just don't have much time to play video games. But even back then, like back in the day when I used to play every week and maybe almost every day, I was never great at video games. Like, don't get me wrong. I try my best, you know, like Call of Duty or whatever. But to be honest, I was always the first one dying in Fortnite. I was always getting blown up in GTA Online. Coming back to this game particularly, I completely forgot how hard the game was. Like GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 are cakewalks compared to San Andreas. I don't know why they made the game unbearably challenging at some points, especially like the earlier missions where CJ and Big Smoke have to kill these guys on the train under a certain time period. And if you don't, the train gets away and you have to restart from the beginning. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. In GTA 5, if you die, you have plenty of checkpoints where you can restart. Now, I know this video may seem like I'm just comparing everything to GTA 5, but what can I say? It's my favorite one. And it's also the most recent one. So I have kind of a right to say it and why I'm comparing it to that. But in San Andreas, some of the missions aren't just hard. They're like stupid hard. Like for example, the mission up, up and away where we have to steal this truck for a heist we're about to pull off. It's a hard mission for sure, but we have to drive all the way out into the desert and go guns blazing in this military base where there's a lot of guards we have to kill. We have to hijack the certain helicopter that is gonna be used to pick up this truck. We have to shoot all these guards, shoot down all these helicopters. About 20 minutes later, and we go pick up the helicopter, go to this location to pick up the truck and head back to Woozy's Casino. But the thing is, like this truck, the certain location, like why couldn't we have just gone to this lot, break into like this parking garage area and just like stole the truck from there. Wouldn't that have made more sense? Wouldn't have that saved us more time from going to the desert, pulling off this massive heist against the army? Plus even funnier enough, the location of the truck was way closer than the location of the helicopter. Like why couldn't we have just gone there to pick up the truck? Why do we have to use this helicopter? You know what I'm saying? So it makes no sense why we stole this helicopter basically for nothing, right? And there is just so much stuff like this in the GTA story missions where it just they just make things harder than it has to be. Like, I get it. It's a video game and it's designed to be fun, entertaining, challenging. But for me, this was not fun. I did not enjoy myself during this mission. I really hated it. <laughs> Since I ended up dying over and over again, if the difficulty wasn't an issue, I wouldn't have minded it. But I can't be the only one. Even David Cross can't even get past a toy plane mission. Every time you come out of the mansion, hey, it's Mr. V. You know, your mission is uh, a worst. pretty tough I mission. I stopped and, and you could do not it? listen. Nope, I stopped. I, I, I tried to cheat. Uh, I could not listen to myself. It was so annoying, so annoying. <laughs> Don't let him get away. Punish him for his war crime. I can't even, I haven't heard it in years, but. So you were haunted by your own voice? I hated it and I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> The RC car thing, or the plane. It's impossible. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's the most annoying voice you could ever imagine accompanying that. Smells like victory. Like, I don't mind a little bit of difficulty. Of course, the big missions like the casino heist and the final battle with Big Smoke were hard missions for sure, but for good reason. In GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, 
There was never really any hard missions. They were all pretty simple and easy to complete. One of my favorite parts about the GTA games is the heist that we pull off. Like I talked about in the beginning of the video, I used to play GTA Online Heist so much with friends on Xbox back in the day. I was disappointed to know when I first played San Andreas that there was only one real heist. The casino heist in Lost in Taurus towards the end of the game. This mission was really, really nice. I thought it was really fun, very challenging at points, but in the end, it was very exciting to pull off. I just wish there was more of this in the game, more heists. But I think this game really just wanted to focus on the gang war and the mafia stuff, since that was more of the core story and what they were trying to tell. I think it makes more sense that GTA V had a lot more heist since it was about these retired bank robbers who come out of retirement to rob more banks, obviously. San Andreas wanted to focus on the Grove Street families, the Balas, and the other guys, which I really liked. It was cool playing the game from the 90s LA gang perspective. San Andreas really wanted this to be a story-based game. All the other games before us didn't have any stories. This was the first game from Rockstar to showcase this grand big story. Like if you look at Vice City, for example, it has you know characters and it has a brief storyline, but nothing super in-depth or interesting like San Andreas or GTA V. And of course, Rockstar loves to tell stories about betrayal and San Andreas is no different. We have seen this a ton throughout their most recent games. The story of betrayal and revenge is one key theme from all of these games. Early on in this game, our sister's boyfriend, Caesar, comes to CJ in an emergency. Caesar finds out the Big Smoke and Ryder, CJ's good friends at the time, betrayed the Grove Street families. Now, there are many videos out here talking about more in depth about the betrayal and all the details and stuff, but I don't want to mention everything here and kind of bore you guys to death. If you guys are interested, there are many videos talking about that subject. But one key thing I just want to take away is that Big Smoke and Ryder basically sold out their bros to the corrupt cops and the rival gang. After this, CJ's brother Sweet is thrown into a trap. They got cops and gang members all around them and they end up in a pickle and get arrested. A day after the shit show, CJ wakes up in the cop car and Sweet ends up in jail awaiting trial. Now CJ basically has to do everything the cops say if he wants to get Sweet out of prison in this whole shitty situation. So CJ does what he does best, shoots the shit, blows some motherfuckers up, and he ends up killing Ryder, the corrupt cops, and Big Smoke at the end of the game in an epic battle that takes place throughout the entire city of Los Santos. In the end of the game, we realize that Big Smoke's betrayal was nothing but a sheer moment of the wind. He never really planned for it, it just kind of happened that way. It reminds me of how Micah Bell's character ended up in Red Dead Redemption 2. But like I said before, that goes with the whole theme of these games, betrayal and revenge. I said in my Grand Theft Auto video essay that the core theme of that game is friendship along the betrayal and revenge. But San Andreas takes a step further, the theme about being with family. We see this in the beginning when CJ returns home and is having trouble to rekindle his relationships with his siblings after the tragedy of their mom. And at the end of the day, they have grown the brotherly and sisterly bond that they once lost before in the midst of their gang trouble and almost dying a million times, basically. And they have really become closer at the end. San Andreas is not just a story about gangs, mafias, and cops. It's a story about family and friends who feel like family. Along the way, they're gonna lose loved ones, friends, get stabbed in the back, have the shit hit the fan, but if you have family by your side, anything is really possible, and that's the true story of San Andreas. Before we wrap up the video, I just want to take another moment to mention how impactful this game was. Like I said before, I could not imagine the reactions to this game back in 2004, and it truly has stood the test of time. The video games hold higher than 90% of the new games that come out each year. And with a rich and broad storyline, seeing this great content come from Rockstar Games gets me more inspired to make more content myself. It makes me want to get out here more and make more movies and YouTube videos. And I can only hope that my stories will impact people just like how they did with Grand Theft Autos and how those stories impacted me and inspired me. But again, here's to 20 years of San Andreas. Cheers, everyone. I am so looking forward to GTA 6 and seeing where the story will go next and seeing the next great games and great uh, content. And I'm very looking forward to it. But only time will tell, and I'm really excited to make content about GTA 6. 
I'm gonna make my GTA 6 fan film, which will come out right before the release of that game. If you wanna stay up to date about that, make sure you check out my filmmaking channel where I will talk about that more in the future. If you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching and all the support. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. Uh, let me know in the comments, what was your favorite moment from GTA San Andreas? What was your favorite memory that you had? Uh, maybe something like, what was your most funniest memory? Till next time, this is Nick Parr signing out. Peace.